Hello, I'm Jessica Kellner. I work in marketing and content and storytelling for American Promise. And I'm really excited to meet and talk with two of the newest American Promise team members. Um, welcome to both of you. And I'll, I'll let you both introduce yourselves and, and tell us what your new role is on the American Promise team. Bye. I'll go first. Um, yeah, my name is um, Dr. Jessica Hare. I am a social worker by trade. I have a BSW, MSW, and I just recently graduated with my doctoral degree in social work. Um, and I am coming to American Promise as the new empowerment director. Awesome. Thank you. Zaisha, how about you? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm Zaisha Allen. Uh, mm -hmm. Also go by Zai. I am the new communications coordinator for American Promise. Awesome. Um, so, Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about sort of what drew you to American Promise and how you, how you came to this organization? Yeah, sure. So, um, I actually saw a Facebook post from Leah about, um, you know, openings that they all, you know, that uh, the organization had. And so, you know, just from there, I went to the website and just kind of played around the website, you know, read about the organization. And um, what drew me to it was that I really saw how what their vision and mission is, how it aligned with social work and our code of ethics. Um, and, you know, just understanding uh, social injustice and advocating for uh, Americans, you know, it all fell in line with um, what we do as social workers. And it allowed me, you know, I felt like the opportunity would allow me to really put on a different hat for social work, because I do, you know, feel that people have um, social work in this uh, bubble as to what they feel like, you know, we can do as far as social services and, um, you know, working with the homeless population. But um, social work is so broad, we have a vast um, set of knowledge and skills that, you know, we can uh, utilize. And so I felt that American Promise, you know, provided me with that platform to be able to wear a different hat in the social work field. Awesome. I would love to hear you talk a little bit more about that. Um, I know I read some things you wrote about the social work code of ethics and what that means to you. Mm -hmm. um, Talk just a little bit more about how you see that interplaying with with the mission of American Promise and the work that you'll be doing together. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, with the code of ethics, you know, we in the social work field, it's really a um, set of values and principles and standards that guide our decision making uh, ethically, you know, to um, assure that we are um, making ethical decisions, morally correct decisions. And within that code of ethics, we have a set of standards. And um, one thing that I really admired about uh, American Promise was that um, in our code of ethics, we really target social justice. So we, um, we challenge social injustice for uh, oppressed populations. Mm -hmm. And what I found with American Promise was that, you know, they are um, challenging social injustice with this 28th Amendment, and they're targeting individuals, you know, not only the wealthy Americans, but also Americans who are not so wealthy, so Americans as a whole. So, you know, how do we, you know, how do you empower and, you know, provide um, that uh, support for everyone? And that's what I admired about American Promise. And then, um, you know, also about the dignity and uh, and worth, of, dignity and worth of a person. That's one of our um, principles as well. And again, American Promise really focuses on empowering Americans, uh, understanding their dignity and worth, giving them a voice to be able to, um, you know, bring about change in the world. Awesome, thank you. That's really, really fascinating. I appreciate that point of view. Um, Zaisha, can we hear a little from you as well? What, what drew you to American Promise and how did you come to the organization? Yeah, so um, I originally, I graduated from Southern College two years ago with my, well, almost three years ago now with my degree in psychology. So I've always kind of been interested, you know, in um, kind of like, you know, the way people think and, you know, um, I used that that degree and those skills to incorporate it into communications and speaking into ways that people, you know, can understand and creative ways so people can relate to the things, you know, that are being expressed. So that kind of what drew me into the field of, you know, social media management and um, with the creativity part, definitely graphic design. So um, 
when I saw the position for American Problems, I was actually in the transition where it's like I was learning how to, you know, do these different things and really uh, honing in, in the whole social media management and everything. And so I felt like I wanted to be able to do that. But at my core, I also really want to be able to do something that I feel like has a purpose, you know, and has a point. So um, I wanted to, when I was introduced to the position for communications coordinator through Leah, I wanted to, I looked over it and seen like the mission of American Promise. And, you know, uh, I really was drawn into the idea of doing something, you know, that I love, you know, I love to create, I love to design, uh, you know, I love to be able to communicate with others. So being able to do something that I enjoy and following like my, my life's purpose in being able to, you know, make change in the world. So definitely, you know, American Promise with the 28 Amendments and with being able to, you know, really get into the core of a lot of these issues, which is, you know, not necessarily representing the people, but, you know, representing these different businesses and uh, corporations. So really getting back to, you know, the core of democracy and a true democracy, you know, I feel like that's really important, so. Yeah. So bringing all of your skills and creativity to something that you feel passionate about professionally. You mentioned um, using communication as a way to really relate to people and bring people mm -hmm. in. I'm, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about you, about your perspective on how good communications and good design can actually can create bridges um, to enable people to, to interact or to relate to a cause or purpose. Definitely. So um, when I first heard of American Promise, I didn't really think, you know, like about a 28th Amendment or, you know, so when, so I, this is why I feel like it's important for communications because with American Promise and being introduced into this new amendment and being introduced to, okay, well, here's uh, a solution, you know, well, like a core solution that can really start making changes and the changes that, you know, I feel like a lot of my peers and a lot of um, people that I'm around, you know, everybody's frustrated because, you know, with everything that's going on, it's like, how do you, you know, how do you solve it? What do you do? And it's like constantly trying to, you know, find a solution. So I feel like being able to bridge the gap and get the word out, like, here's something you can do and giving people hope, you know, because a lot of people do feel lost. And I feel like that's definitely what my goal is with working in communications and with American Promise. Awesome, thank you. So you probably both are aware, but um, American Promise is a really vast and vibrant network made up of people and chapters all over the country, everybody working together from where they live and their point of view to, to further this one cause together. Um, so I know everyone would love to just hear a little bit about you, you personally, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, where you live, a little bit of background. Um, we'll start start with you again, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, a little background about me. I have three beautiful children. Um, Morgan, my oldest, she's 11. And I have twins, Nicholas and Megan, that are five. Wow. Um, so I'm a busy mom. Um, I enjoy exercise. So I'm a former division one athlete, uh, women's basketball. So I've always um, stayed in shape and did all that. So I do uh, CrossFit workouts uh, like five to six times a week. Um, <sighs> what else did you ask? <laughs> um, I know you're moving soon. Where are you? Yes, yes, yes. So um, when I graduated from undergrad in, two, in, um, in uh, 07, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and that's where I have been for the past, well, since 07, and then we just recently um, moved to Blythewood, South Carolina last year. Um, so in about two weeks, we will be moving um, to Atlanta, new environment, just kind of transitioning in my career and in my personal life. Um, you know, my children and I, we're just getting a fresh new start. So we're going to Atlanta and we're going to, uh, you know, have this, this awesome new job. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, you know, um, one thing that I will say about me too, is that I'm also passionate about, um, about the domestic violence population. 
Um, so in my uh, in my downtime, I do volunteer um, as a de as a designated speaker with the Domestic Violence Speakers Bureau that's in Charlotte, and I'm also the third vice president of membership over the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, um, where we you know do a lot of advocacy work, um, advocating for um, for a uh, for um, Black women and um, children. Um, so you know I'm pretty uh, busy you know um, you know uh, in my personal life as well, but yeah, that's kind of really all I feel like sharing. <laughs> That's awesome. And congratulations on the new, new move. And fresh that sounds exciting. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Zai, let's hear a little bit from you about your background, family, whatever you feel like sharing. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, so um, Jessica, like we were saying earlier, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's where I currently reside. We're kind of in the metro Atlanta area, so um, over here on the west side of Atlanta is where I currently reside. Um, I guess a little bit more about me. Uh, I love to learn. I'm really big on like self-educating and self-improvement, so I spend a lot of my time when I'm not working, working. <laughs> really, <laughs> um, really like trying to be the greatest version of myself. So I do lots of work with, well, work personally. So like I, you know, watch lots of videos and uh, trying to grow and hone my craft in graphic design and um, just learning new ways to do things, which is one me. I also love to travel, which I can't currently do right now, which I feel like is why I've been. <laughs> no. <laughs> <just so much. laughs> Yeah, I've definitely been in the books a lot more because I am unable to travel. But um, on my free time, I, because when I was in Spelman um, for my undergrad, well, the only grad I have, but <laughs> when I was in Spelman, um, I took a study abroad that I went to Italy and I was able to, you know, really step outside of where I was in like, um, like expand and see the world and I was like I want to do this a lot more so mm -hmm. um when things open up back up again you know I talked to a lot of people about you know a lot of people who want to travel but aren't able to so um showing them that it's affordable and things of that nature so yeah that's a little side stuff about yeah where in Italy did you go uh, so it was a month that I was there so I went to La Spezia Florence and I forgot the other one but it's <laughs> like one of the main areas so I'm like how did I forget the name <laughs> um it's all water cars can't yeah. drive there so Venice Venice yes Venice <laughs> <laughs> how could I forget yeah Venice. awesome that sounds great so, so curious as I um in your personal life, have you seen any experiences? Um, you talked about wanting to make sure your professional life has a purpose that's important to you. Is there anything in your personal life that kind of helps illuminate the issues that American Promise is looking to address or that um, show you why in your life, your family's life, your community's life, this work is really important? I feel like it there was a lot of things that happened at once. So there was everything that was going on with the virus. And then there's also, you know, all of this injustice that, you know, has been there, but it's kind of, you know, everybody's stuck at home, like watching it and seeing it go through and then seeing the different protests. Um, and I remember, you know, during the protest, um, I did participate in some of the, you know, the peaceful protests and, you know, uh, there was talking a lot about, um, you know, having our voice being able to be heard. And there was one speaker who was talking about lobbying in particular and the NAACP has like, ha um, not like 500, half a million dollars for lobbying, you know, and so they, they don't necessarily Ha which seems like a lot, you know, for somebody who doesn't really know the background, but like, it's not a lot of money. Yeah. So um, literally the week after that, I 
was introduced to American Promise. And I feel like we were just talking about lobbying and, you know, leveling out the playing fields. And I was like, this is definitely something, you know, that can, you know, can start and spark this change. So um, definitely excited about communicating that to more people because, you know, the law people, you know, they know what the issues are, you know, this obviously we see the issues, but it's like finding a way to, you know, come mm -hmm. to solution for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And Jessica, how about you? I'm curious if there's examples in your personal life for, for you, for your family, for your community that you've seen that kind of speak to how important this this movement and this work is for all Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think for me it would be more personal um, because so okay so going back to my doctoral program, I had a professor, Professor um, Charles. Uh, Charles Lewis, Dr. Charles Lewis. He um he was a or he is a political social worker. Mm -hmm. And we were all kind of like, you know, what is a political social worker? You know, like what do you do? What do, you know, what what is that? Um and so he, you know, explained it in grave detail, explained it very well, um, you know, for us to grasp the concept of, you know, as to what it is that he does. And to me, that really opened my eyes because I've never been a, um, a hardcore politics individual, um, but it made me realize that I need to understand what's going on in our world. Where are our tax dollars being spent? Where, you know, you know, you know, why is gas so expensive? Why, you know, why is money being allocated for this and not that? You know, and it for me. American Promise really um, is opening that door to educate Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and with this 28th Amendment, you know, again, I had never really heard of the 28th Amendment, um, you know, and what it stood for and the movement and everything. So um, that's why this is like very important to me because again, you know, not only am I being educated, but I'm also being a afford the opportunity to educate others to it you know and while i'm educating others i'm empowering others to have their voice heard to let them know that you know you do have a voice and it needs to be heard which is you know for me i do have a voice and it needs to be heard i need to understand what's going on in our government what's going on you know in the white house all the way down to your uh, local let you know your uh, your uh, local offices understand what's happening in your backyard because if you don't understand then how can you make you know, how, you know, how can there be, you know, how can there be a change? Right, right. Well, that leads perfectly into the next question I was going to ask you. Why would you encourage um, all Americans to get involved in this movement, to get behind this, to get behind the 20th Amendment, to come together to make this systemic fundamental change? Yeah, um, again, you know, I just feel like I, I personally would encourage Americans to get behind this movement just to better educate yourself about the political system. Um, understand where your money is being spent. Understand the, um, you know, the tax dollars. Understand where funds are being allocated. Understand that, you know, you may have some programs that are fully funded that don't need any more funding. And you may have some programs that are struggling that is going to benefit the community and benefit the state and they need extra funding. So, um, you know, we as Americans just really need to educate ourselves. And I'm a firm believer that there's always something that could be learned. So every day that we go by, we should learn at, at least one new thing. If we don't, then that's a day wasted. <laughs> it's a day wasted because, it, you know, it's just so much information out there, um, you know, to, you know, educate, you know, educate yourself on. And I really feel like America Promise needs, you know, like, people should really get on board and get behind this amendment just to educate themselves, you know, so that, you know, we can live better, you know, liberated lives and, you know, set up the, you know, set up everything for our, for our future, you know, children, you know, you know, uh, you know, I have three small children. So, you know, I feel like I'm kind of paving the way for them, you know, as you know, whenever I get involved in things and educate myself as to what's going on that, you know, shows them, to really get, you know, get involved with things, you know, so, um, you know, they can understand, okay, what's happening in America, what's happening with our, you know, constitution, what's happening, you know, where's my money going, you know, how can I set up, you know, a future for my children, 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's why I really encourage people to really get on board with, you know, what America Promise is doing. Awesome. Thank you. Zai, what about you? Um, what are what are some of the reasons you encourage would encourage your peers, your friends, your neighbors, your family to to care about this and get involved in this movement? Yeah, so definitely, definitely the education. So being able to tell people, you know, like this is what we're doing, um, you know, and being able to provide hope, right? So um, I do definitely feel like with the 28 Amendments and, you know, taking all this, you know, big money out of politics and making it about the people, you know, um, it it can, it's a, it's a strong starting ground, you know, cause you know, there's so much work to begin, be done, but you know, there's, uh, it gives people, I feel like with the 28 amendment, being able to educate people on this and, you know, tell people, you know, this is what we're doing. It, it allows people to be like, okay, well, this is something that I can get behind, you know, because, um, a lot of people, I feel like they, they want to do something, but they feel like their voice, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So, yeah. you know, they, they kind of just stop trying. So I want to be able to, you know, tell people, you know, um, we're, this is what we're working towards and, you know, you can work towards it too and we can make change. Like we can make this happen. Awesome. Know, so definitely spreading that hope. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate both of your time and meeting you. I have one more question for both of you before we end. Um, Zai, I'll start with you. What is one of the main missions that you hope to accomplish as a member of the American Promise team? So yeah, definitely my, my main mission is to bridge the gap, right? So definitely get the word out because I feel like once the word is out, there's a lot of people who are gonna, you know, get behind it, mm -hmm. you know, on both sides of the spectrum. So um, yeah, definitely to get the word out, to, you know, spread the word about American Promise and what we're doing. Awesome. And Jessica, how about you? What's one of the main missions you hope to accomplish? I think the main mission that I hope to accomplish is to continue my advocacy and empowerment efforts that I've already begun in my personal life, but to bring that into my professional life, just continue to empower individuals uh, from oppressed populations to really understand that, you know, they have a voice, their voice can and will be heard. Um, and, you know, you know, of course, to really um, bring in more chapters across America and, you know, see a definitely increase in the number of people that we get on board behind this, you know, movement for the 28th Amendment. Awesome. Well, again, thank you both. I really appreciate your time. Very excited to be working with both of you. And it's really inspiring to hear um, all of your thoughts and all of the energy that you're bringing to the team. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.